tell me, your presentation was around the bacteria in our gut, and it depends very much where we live, what we eat, uh, and which type of bacteria then are associated with this eating or living pattern. Let me say, in a specific city in China, uh, a Chinese person goes to uh, a restaurant which has Western food, offers Western food, a McDonald's-like diet every day, and the neighbor is using the traditional diet. Would these two persons with very similar genetic background have different gut microbiota? Absolutely. I mean, they, the diets really affect the pattern of the gut microbiota. It's actually the, one of the main factors there. Would the person who has the Western diet have similar microbiota compared to a European or an American who is going to uh, adhering to this diet? Well, actually, genetic background also play an important role here. So they will not be exactly the same, even they are having the same diets. So the Chinese genetic background is different with the European genetic background. So even they are having the same food, the diet, and the gut microbial will be different. Another aspect which was very interesting <coughs> is the outcome on traditional Chinese medicine products and gut microbiota, because you speculated a little bit this might the be the way how they work. You focused, for example, on garlic powder, which influences the bile flow. Is this correct? Mm -hmm. But you also focused on aloe. Uh, what is aloe doing? Because this is a product which is available everywhere. Yeah. Well, we tested aloe and we figured out actually aloe boosting the bacteria that produce shortage of fatty acids, which is supposedly good for you to protect you against the, uh, you know, obesity, type diabetes, and so on. So, if so the, uh, the traditional Chinese medicine has been documented, um, you know, thousands of years. Uh, talking about uh, eating certain herbs and food, whatever, could actually uh, try to protect you uh, against a certain disease, or even cure the disease, or treat the disease. So, uh, but sometimes because they, they just sort of, they know it works, but they don't know why it works, right? So uh, what we are doing is try to explain why and try to see, first of all, if it's real and, 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 um, and why. So then we let use you know, different food and screen to see how they change the microbiota and how they change the metabolism of the human, then sort of um, um, to see um, if we can explain the, um, the mechanisms there. So uh, one uh, final question. Aloe is used in the Chinese medicine to prevent from obesity and metabolic disease? There is some, uh, yeah, there is some documentation talking about that, absolutely. It's interesting if this is uh, confirmed by evidence-based medicine in the future. But we are still doing more research on this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the preliminary results are very promising. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.